people told me I was crazy to decline a medical school acceptance. They told me on Student Doctor Network that I would never get into med school again. I was going to be blacklisted and that's absolutely not true. Hey everybody, this is Jay. Welcome to my channel. So I want to share my story with you. Normally you hear about people applying to medical school once, twice, three times and getting rejected and then finally getting in eventually. So my story is a little bit different. I applied twice and I actually got accepted both times. But I declined my first acceptance and I will explain why and where I'm at now and when I'm finally starting medical school. So let's start from the beginning. Um, during my undergrad, I went in undecided actually. I knew that I liked science, physics, math, problem solving, and I also liked medical related things. So I still didn't know what major I wanted to do or go into. So I spent the first semester, even my first freshman year, going in and out of the career office, taking different types of assessments, personality, career, perspective whatever assessments and you know I would get all of these different outcomes but eventually what I decided was a compromise between engineering and medicine so I get I wanted to have more options so I went with biomedical engineering this way if I wanted to be an engineer after I graduated I could and I still had you know that connection to healthcare but at the same time if I wanted to go into medicine I could do that as well after graduating so i went into biomedical engineering and honestly i really loved my undergrad i loved all of the classes because it was a lot of problem solving and a lot of computation i guess and that's how my brain functions so my undergrad was great and in the beginning of my undergrad probably freshman sophomore year and part of junior year i was set on just purely being an engineer i didn't have that pull towards going into medicine as much or going into medical school so it wasn't until junior year the beginning of junior year when I kind of started to realize that I wanted to apply to med school and go into medicine and keep that option open in any case so I started doing more volunteering more shadowing because I hadn't done that previously since I was focused purely on engineering and so I shifted gears and um, you know started getting more clinical hours and more volunteering hours and then at the towards the end of my junior year I really kind of started preparing my application really early on just because I wanted to submit it immediately like on the June 1st deadline so that I had the highest chance of getting accepted I didn't want to you know wait because I had heard from everybody like turn it in immediately submit it immediately which is great I was actually excited to do the application and put everything together but I did postpone my MCAT I actually ended up taking my MCAT in June so it's like I had submitted my application but hadn't even taken the MCAT yet and to be completely honest I didn't really study for the MCAT the first time around it was a poor decision and I've learned so much since then um, I didn't study at all no study period no study schedule I was kind of just picking things up here and there while I was also doing my other classes and so I took it and And so I took it and I got my score back and obviously it was not what I wanted it to be. I knew that it was not what my potential was. And so I decided to take the MCAT yet again as soon as possible so that I could have it as a part of my application cycle. And that was a huge mistake as well, but we'll go into another video for that. So I ended up taking the MCAT a second time and actually doing worse on it which it happens i mean it happens what can i say when you don't actually 
study like you're supposed to study and have a study schedule it happens so I felt really discouraged but my application was still going through and pretty early on in the cycle I actually got my first interview and I interviewed and literally three days later I found out that I was accepted at an in-state institution um, which was great like that was that was not what I expected, especially since I had gotten a lower MCAT score the second time around. And so then I was kind of like, okay, I'm safe, I'm accepted. By the start of my senior year, I already knew I was accepted. So then I was just waiting for any other news, whether I would get any other interviews. So I ended up getting two more interviews and went to those, but didn't get accepted. So I still had one acceptance and I went with that. But because I wanted to keep my options open during that same time, I had also applied to some different opportunities like working abroad or teaching abroad and then the Fulbright scholarship. So that was kind of just a backup plan that I ended up getting a Fulbright scholarship to teach English uh, in Poland at a medical university and so at that time I was kind of tossing and turning between should I go to med school should I defer should I go to Fulbright and in the end what I decided was I was looking for for a chance to defer my acceptance and do my Fulbright year abroad and then come back to medical school. And for some reason when I was communicating with the school and trying to express that I wanted to defer and my reason for deferral, they weren't too thrilled about it or too open to the idea. And so at that point I kind of made this decision where if you're not going to let me defer for this amazing opportunity then I think this is not the institution for me like this is not where I want to be I don't feel comfortable I don't feel like this is the atmosphere that is right for me and I also was kind of still tossing and turning between do I want to actually go into medicine do I not want to go into medicine so I made this decision quite risky decision that took me some time to decline my acceptance and not go to med school and at that time it was pretty daunting to make that decision you know I went online uh, on student doctor network consulted with all my past professors with all my friends and people thought I was crazy people thought I was um, really just crazy to decline an acceptance and on student doctor network people were bashing me like you're gonna get blacklisted, you're never gonna get into med school again, and you, you know, so many people strive to get into med school once and you're, you're throwing this t to waste and whatnot. But I felt like this was the right decision for me and looking back on it, I don't regret my decision at all. So I declined my acceptance and I said, you know, I'm gonna take some time to, to live and experience other things and if I still truly feel like med school is for me down the line then I will simply reapply and see what happens and so that's what I did so I did my Fulbright year and during my Fulbright year I didn't reapply I took I didn't like reapply immediately the next cycle I took my time and actually ended up taking the MCAT for a third time because I knew that I could do better and I decided to retake it on a whim it was at the end of my senior year had just graduated and I had about three months in between graduation and me having to go abroad for my Fulbright and literally on a Sunday night I was like okay um, there's a Princeton review course starting tomorrow let's just do it so I signed up and I took the Princeton review course it was like a 12 week course and I actually followed the schedule was super meticulous studied from 9 a.m. to like 9 p.m. had a full schedule I did nothing else for those three months basically and I took the MCAT and then literally five days later I was flying abroad to start my Fulbright so good news this time around was that my third MCAT was 
a success, or at least I like to think so. Finally, I learned my lessons of studying and what studying actually means and being efficient when it comes to studying. So I ended up getting my MCAT score back and I had improved by, I don't even remember, but maybe seven to 10 points. So it was a big shift for me, a big shift in my mindset. And I finally felt like, okay, I can do this. Um, you know, so then I did my Fulbright year abroad, which I'll go into another video on that. And I decided to stay on a second year. And during that second year, I was still kind of conflicted in trying to figure out if I wanted to apply to med school again or not apply. And I ended up applying. And so I applied for a second cycle and ended up getting three interviews. So because I was abroad during this time, I had gotten one interview and I flew back to the US. I did my interview and I wasn't going to find out if I got accepted until several months later because this school does a, not a rolling admission, but a, like they interview everybody and then they notify their final decisions. So I wasn't going to find out if I got accepted. And I, during that time, I got two more interviews, but because they were so inconveniently timed, I would have to spend thousands of dollars flying back and forth between Europe and the US. And I would have to kind of waste a lot of time. And, and so I made this decision, yet another bold decision, to just not do any more interviews. I did my one interview at the one med school and I declined the other, other interviews. I didn't want to waste any more time or money on this or stress on this. And I said, you know, I am putting all of my eggs in this one basket and if it happens, if I get accepted, then it was meant to be. And if I don't get accepted, then it simply wasn't meant to be. And maybe I'll have to go through another si uh, application cycle. And um, the time came eventually when the decisions came out and I got accepted and, you know, I viewed it as it was meant to be. This was supposed to happen in this way. So from there, I was still kind of, I didn't feel ready for several reasons, I would say. I didn't feel ready to go back to the US yet. I didn't feel ready to start med school yet. And so for personal reasons, I chose to defer my acceptance for a year. And I'm eternally grateful that my institution was understanding and supportive. And I finally felt like, okay, this is the atmosphere and the surroundings that I want to be in, the people that I want to work with because I truly feel supported and empowered. And so, here we are today now. I am currently living in Paris and I have been in quarantine in Paris for the past 70 days. And I will be starting medical school in July. So, um, yeah, medical school starts in July and it will all be online until a certain point. We've already been notified. And I'm extremely excited and I uh, have chosen to start a blog, which is a work in progress. I'm not very good at writing, but I wanted to document this and also share the past and my journey up until this point with anybody who is interested, with anybody else who is kind of scared of taking risks or it's finding it really tough to make decisions. This is my story and I'm here to share it with you and we'll see where I end up because now I'm in Paris, but next week I might be somewhere else. And yeah, so I welcome you. Anybody comment below if you have any questions, you can connect with me on Instagram and uh, I look forward to seeing you in our next video.